back to 7 o'clock show, everybody. We're live with you until 8 o'clock, and we have tricked Vincent Brown into joining us on the show. And now, as added punishment for being such a naughty boy, he's in the kitchen to learn how to bake. Okay? So concentrate, please. All right. Let's try and stay awake. <laughs> Louise, okay, scones, talk to us. Okay, so I've got two things to make, so I'm yeah. going to keep speeding this up. This is a great trick when you're making pastry or scones, yeah. is if you have a food processor. Now, a lot of people, like me in my kitchen, are tied for space, so it actually fits on top of your mixer. It's a okay. brilliant little attachment, and it saves your money, so okay. you can kind of get two for one. So what I have in here is some self-raising flour and a little bit of baking powder. I've added in some sugar. You could make these savoury, so just leave out the sugar if you want to make them savoury. Right. And I've got butter. Um, best if it's out of the fridge, because it mixes in better um, when you're kind of chopping it up. Yes. Now, this saves getting your hands completely messy and kind of saves your clothes as well. Do so, you need Vincent to chop anything or just for um, No, he, I've been giving you strawberries to eat, so keep a nice Surely healthy. you could chop us, okay. So this will literally take like, yeah, I promise them in sound it would take 10 seconds or less. Okay. And this is just fast forwarding them, rubbing them in with your fingers and kind of making them a little bit bread crummy. And that's done. So it's so a that's fast your base. Way. That's the base, yeah. So at this point, if you were doing a little savoury number, you'd throw in your cheese and everything now? Yeah, or sun dried tomatoes or herbs tomatoes and that, yeah. So I just have this in a separate bowl. Now, the trick I find with scones is if you're making pastry, you could put in your wet mixture into that now. But to keep them nice Stop and light, you actually want to add these into a bowl and just fold it in with a fork. Because Gosh. a lot of people go wrong is when they make scones, they actually make them far too dense. And um, I find that when you cut into them, do you ever find they crumble an awful Yes. Lot? I don't order them out in coffee shops. Mm. And my other biggest gripe is they'll tell you they're with clot of cream and it's normally whipped cream and that is a major pet hate. I think mine. Vincent has a question, Louise. So uh, do do you add in a uh, sure set jam sugar um, <laughs> and cook to a medium He's heat? He's reading my notes. Until, uh, Depends until what the sugar is completely have. dissolved. <laughs> and then you yes, then you increase do. heat and bring if to boil. If anyone's while, confused at home, we fast forward it to jam. For four minutes and then <laughs> That's not the jam, Vincent. That's so the scones. Oh, <laughs> you should know the this from baking at the ever. weekend. That is exactly how you make the jam, yeah. <laughs> so what I have here is I've added in some cranberries. And okay. um, I, I, I'm not a big lover of dried fruit, but a great tip. Um, what I do is I soak them in some fruit juice. If you want, you can soak them in a bit of alcohol. Yeah. And um, you can leave it overnight. Or what I did is I put it on to frost in the microwave for 10, sec or for 10 minutes. Okay. And it forces all of the lovely juiciness inside them and it stops them being dry because when you bake them in the oven, they get even drier. Yes. Yeah. So just going to add in the eggs and the milk. And we do keep a little bit back. Um, I actually made some in advance. Okay. I broke an egg on the way in here. Oh dear. So rather than waste it, I said I would keep it. I didn't, well don't done. worry. It didn't make it to the floor, just on the counter. Oh, do we? So I think we have another question here. Oh. Broach it. Uh, do you brush each of the scones with reserve <laughs> egg mix? If it doesn't end up on the floor, I would say yes. <laughs> See, good I, I see good I question, that, Vincent. So. Back to you, Louise. <laughs> so, now you're going to need to get your hands tray? Oh, Sorry, Louise, one more yeah. question. Flav have you got a flavoured tray and a preheated oven 165 Because this degrees. is live TV, we oh. pretend it's preheated. We stick yes. the light on, Vincent, but it means that I can actually take it out and not now, look Vincent, for Now, Vincent, you'll have to hold your questions. 25 minutes of golden, until golden brown. Yeah. Yeah, since, you know all of this. Stop <laughs> pretending to read. We know you're a master baker at home. So, all you do then what? is what? just clump all this together. Master baker! Do you have a sweet tooth at all? Uh, this one. That one. <laughs> have a little. He's being very naughty. You stone. just eat your strawberries there now and don't be naughty. Sorry, Louise. So all you do is just kind of squash this all together. You don't want this to be completely smooth because if it is, then it's going to be quite dense and uh, you don't like dense scones. Right. So now what I'm going to do is roll this out and I've just got a little board here because this helps. Oh, we have someone who might be interested in rolling at least. Rolling. Stop looking at me. I, I, I would say probably not. No? Okay. <laughs> you know what? Oh, the best Joy part about being a guest no. is just being can fed. Can you roll? No. Surely you can no. No. So I'm just going to do a small amount here because um, I want to get the jam made as well. Just kind of bring it together. You don't have to necessarily roll out. You can also pat it out if you want to. Um, just get a small touch of flour here. So I have a little bit of extra flour. And then I'm just going to just pat it out. Or you can roll it out. I've got a nice pink rolling pin to match the dress. And then scone cutter. Very simple, you could just have these or you could just use the 
top of a glass. If you don't have a scone cutter at home, just cut them into that. Or what you can also do is just get a knife and just cut it into a square and just divide it up. You don't have to worry if you don't have any baking tools at home because okay. for scones, you don't really need them. You always make it look so easy. See if I now, at home if you do want to avoid the soggy bottom, really preheat the tray, take it out with a hot cloth and stick these on top. But if I always make it with a cold tray and it never goes soggy, so maybe we need to get the oven checked for temperature. These go in I thought for it was a hot tray and a soggy bottom, was it not? <laughs> That's just Martin's problem. We're just talking about scones here. Um, so I have some I've already made, but I'm going to go ahead and make the jam and clean it down the fingers. So how are we making the jam now, Vincent? Vincent, jam, 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 jam. So, um, for jam, a lot of people go wrong because they don't understand the little bit of science behind it. Yes, and, um, the gelatin, is it? Um, it's actually pectin, and that's pectin. what sets jam. Now, there's fruits that are hot, naturally high in it, like blackberries, uh, or sorry, not blackberries, like crab apples, cooking mm. apples, damson plums, mm. and quince are very, very high in it. And then also citrus fruits, so you've got your um, oranges and your lemons. Now, fruits that are really, really low in it, one of them is strawberries, blackberries. Oh. That's why a lot of times they have jams that are kind of paired up, so blackberry and apple jam is quite common. Yeah. Uh, really easy way of doing it is if you do use uh, sugar that's got pectin added into it. You don't have to worry about making it and testing it. If you didn't use this, what you would have to do is you'd add in a little bit of lemon, and then when it reaches a boil, you'd have to keep checking it or have a sugar thermometer. A lot of people don't have this. And I God, saw Mary Berry. Mary Berry made it with this because I had people question me before using this. And I was kind of going, do you know what? If it's good enough for Mary Berry, it's good enough for everyone else. Yeah. And after that, they stopped giving out. But and it's all a bit I tricky do, though, the jam, isn't it? It is a bit tricky. Well, not with this. So all you do is you just kind of mash up the strawberries. You can use this with fresh or frozen fruit. And another myth is they uh, people believe that if the softer the fruit or it's about to go off, it's perfect for making preserves. It's actually wrong. You need it slightly underripe. Right. Uh, yeah, has a better flavor. Right. Well, I should understand it because I presume you'll be baking uh, scones. You test afterwards. But if you don't pass, there's no the food. people's debate, you can whip up a few scones and bring them to wherever you're going to next. To feed the multitude. Yeah. <laughs> Well, you could, you, that's, one th that's why I always win over people, just feed them all. Exactly. Um, so then all I'm going to do is just give that a little bit of a stir around and you just wait for the sugar to dissolve. dissolve. Then when it comes to rolling boil, you time it for four minutes. Okay. If you go in any way over, it's going to be really, really leathery. And what I actually do is I don't have equal parts. Some people say equal parts of um, fruit to sugar. I like a little less sweet. Okay. So I add in less sugar. So it's, it you would be always add a bit of sugar maybe to the cream. Um, if you want to, yeah. But no, sweet oh, enough. Okay. So what I also added in there was a vanilla pod. So a lot of people complain because you have to, vanilla pods are expensive. But you yeah, can they keep are. them. You can keep them. So these are the ones oh. I kept. I used them um, for making custard. Washed them, dried them, kept them, and you can still use them for jam, and they still have a beautiful flavour. If you don't have it, you don't okay, have to worry about it. Okay, but could you could it. you go again with that vanilla pod? Yep. Okay, so it even still has using little it this seeds time. in it. Yeah, yeah. It, it's still giving off flavour. Like the thing is, this is a preserve, so the idea is that you keep leaving it and it keeps kind of giving off the scent and all the rest of it. You have to leave now. the jam for five minutes. <laughs> yes. Okay, so are we going to look at one? Now we're on live TV. You leave, no. it, you leave it for as long as we've got time off the floor This manager. is the big reveal now. This is the so, big reveal, everybody. This oh. is the non... Let's, we'll have a little check to make sure there's no soggy bottoms on these boys. Yeah. No. Um, so these go in. And then what we're left with is the nicely cut scones. So these are the ones I just kind of randomly chopped with my um, knife. Yeah. And then these are the ones I just used a cutter with. So I, I don't know, There's a, the, some people are divided on us. Do you put jam on it first or do you put cream? I'm kind of a jam Ooh, person first. Yes. And the nice thing like about this is... like scone? You allow the jam to cool completely before putting the label on. Thank you, Vincent. <laughs> so, so you would the label says the eat me now, so we'll yes. avoid that. And then Let's a little bit of cream on top of that. And they're so easy. Great thing about scones is they actually freeze really, really well. So I always make more than I need because you always have, you know, people dropping over. And in my house, uh, they expect you to always have something freshly coming out of the oven. Yes. So I just like hit you, them Vincent. a little bit of defrost in, and then stick them in the oven for like five minutes just to take the uh, chill no. out of them and they're perfect. Thank you, Louise. Lovely guest. Please eat a scone. Now, that's just, I'm going to have to Try start it. time that for four minutes now because it's starting to boil. Yeah, we'll give some for Martin and Connor. Maybe just be like a little bit more enthusiastic.